Hello, this is Shambhavi. Welcome to Satsang. Satsang is an ancient spiritual practice from India. It means being in reality together. I give Satsang live every Wednesday and Sunday night in Portland, Maine. This Dharma talk was recorded during one of our Wednesday night gatherings. Please visit jayakula.org to learn more about the teachings. You can find video satsangs on Jayakula's YouTube channel, and my books are all available on Amazon.com. Much love to you, wherever and however you are. Last Wednesday, when we had our open house, I talked about our real nature, or your real nature, and what that means. And you can find that talk, if you're in MGO, you can find that talk on the MGO Peeps page. I think it's a pretty good introduction to what direct realization traditions are about. Today I want to talk about something that's equally as important, which is your real circumstance. (laughs) Uh, Your real nature is used in all the direct realization traditions or some variation of that. Primordial nature, something. There's always a phrase that means your real nature. But your real circumstance is actually a phrase that is mostly used by my Dzogchen teacher. That's where I picked it up. I mean, we talk about it in Chikashaivism, but we don't use that exact phrase. I think it's a nice companion phrase, though, to your real nature. When Namkai Norbubuche talks about your real circumstance, he means noticing what's actually happening and looking deeper into it and discovering where circumstances are arising from. So there's basically three kind of aspects of your real circumstance when you're being in duality and you're not yet fully realized. Or let's just say you're not hardly realized. (laughs) Because that's what I really want to talk about. So the first circumstance is the least conscious circumstance. It's the most limited circumstance. It's the most karmically conditioned circumstance. And that is you are having an explanation for your responses to things that involves attributing your responses to things to external circumstance or to some problem that you have. You have just regular ordinary mind explanations for things. I am pissed off because Bob left his copies in the copier. Or I'm sad because so-and-so doesn't want to be my friend. Or I'm depressed because I wasn't breastfed and I didn't get the vitamins and minerals I needed when I was younger and now I'm depressed chronically. Or something like, I am good at or bad at something because of my astrology. It can sound spiritual, but it's still the sort of ordinary mind explanation, and it's a very closed explanation. The real answer is the reason why you show up in certain ways is unexplainable. (laughs) And when we try to have some tiny little explanation for it, it really is basically cutting out 99.99999% of cause and effect. So that's the most superficial level. Then you get some teachings and you have the explanation of karma. For instance, if you're a Jayakula student, you start saying stuff like, I'm in the Titan realm. I'm competitive. I'm angry. I'm in the hell realm. I'm this, I'm that. These are all still extremely self-referential explanations for things. They're, they're a little bit more taking responsibility for how you're showing up, but they still aren't getting to the root of what's happening. They are, still aren't getting to the real bottom line of your circumstance. They're still somewhat externalized. You're relying on some kind of external explanation for things. Your real circumstance, when we are working with our reactivity, we're trying to 
relax some tensions that are showing up in a particular moment. We are not trying to explain how we are. So the, the first thing that makes your relationship to your reactivity superficial is that you're trying to explain either to yourself or somebody why you are the way you are. The only way to get at your real circumstance is to feel how you really are. Words are coming out of your mouth. You're in some situation at work or at home with another person, with your own habitual patterns. Thoughts are going on in your mind. Words are coming out of your mouth. And you are very much focused on those words or those thoughts. That's what you think is your vector for investigating your circumstance. What am I thinking? How am I talking about this to somebody? What you really need to do is stop and feel the quality of your energy, your emotions, and your mind. If you want to know your real circumstance, that's what you have to do. The deeper underlying circumstance that is giving rise to realm vision what is been below, beneath, be, sitting behind those karmic realm visions? What is sitting behind all of those psychological explanations and blame and trying to package everything into neat stories about why you are the way you are and then calling it a day? So you're trying to get behind or below all of that to what is your actual condition of your body, energy, and mind. Let's say that someone just said something to me that was a critical, I, or I received it as critical, whether, the, whether it was or not. I immediately go into some sort of high gear trying to say something that will defend my self-image. And I'm saying, no, the reason I'm doing this is because you don't understand. That's my explanation for it. Or then if I might go a little bit deeper, I might say, well, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm stuck in the human realm. But if I go a little bit deeper, I don't think about it at all. What I feel is how my energy is racing. What I feel is how threatened I feel. I feel that I'm in fight or flight mode. Right. If you don't get down to that level, it's like the machine language level, right, <laughs> for computer people. If you don't get down to that level of raw situation, gunas, you could say, you know, something inside is racing, something inside feels aggressive, something inside feels scared and threatened. I, if you don't get down to that level, then you cannot relax those tensions. You can't talk your way out of reactivity, especially not deeply ingrained reactivity, even with spiritual explanations. So you guys have a lot of tools, you know, like especially the six realms, and they're sort of huge categories of ways that people relate according to karmic patterning. But you have to get down to what's giving rise to it. You know, in, in the foundations teaching, there is that category of what do you really feel inside? And very few people actually want to go down to that level or get to that place of what am I really feeling? And well, I'm really feeling lonely or I'm really feeling scared or I'm really feeling cornered or I'm really feeling something else. Or I'm just so worried about what someone will think of me and I'm just, you know, all this other behavior is being generated on top of that. Until you get down to that level, you cannot work with your condition. No amount of explanations of realm visions is going to help you if you can't actually feel your real condition. And then, then and only then, if you have the courage... To, and you take response. This is the real definition of taking responsibility. You know, taking responsibility doesn't mean, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so hell realmy. 
taking responsibility means going in there and feeling how upset you are with yourself and that you're trying to hurt other people because you're upset with yourself and really feeling that and then going into your heart and doing guru yoga or doing some kind of mantra, whatever you need to do to connect to whatever sense of goodness that you have, whatever sense of that Vajra-like presence, whatever sense of the divine that you have. I'm just using bunches of different words. You have to recognize your real condition for what it is with no story around it, no, ex- you can't explain any of this away. And then you have to go right in the middle of it and start paying attention to what is eternal rather than what is ephemeral. All of these feelings that are swelling around in there and these patterns. And you have to let yourself be nourished and soothed by that. Now, the problem is that when you're feeling scared, when you're feeling lonely, when you're feeling sad, all these very basic things that we feel that actually are generating all of these realm visions, you want to do something to get away from that. And so it's hard on to just go into being with Ma or whomever and letting that calm you down rather than going to your usual strategies of externalizing everything or explaining everything. It's also hard or even harder because all of the apparatus that you've built up around those very core patterns of body energy and mind are keeping you feeling very enclosed. So there you are, and you're with your little hot house of karmas and all your explanations, even your spiritual explanations, and you're just in that bubble of mostly being in your head. And you're comfortable in there, even though you're thinking all kinds of things that you don't think are so nice, you're still comfortable in there on some level. And when you go into the realm of your practice, when you be in the state of your practice and you stop grabbing at solutions, ordinary mind solutions to your fixations, suddenly you are in vastness. There is no more bubble. And it might happen that you feel really, really uncomfortable doing that, or even like fear. But it is the only way to really start to erode those tensions. You have to start getting used to being in the world without all of your apparatus. So that actually feeling, letting yourself feel your real condition, and then letting yourself actually feel wisdom. You have to do both of those things in a concrete way. And then those tensions start to erode. But simply going on and on and on and on with your explanations of things and analyzing things and telling yourself stuff about yourself and other people is really not going to have the kind of impact that letting yourself feel your real base condition and then going into the state of your practice will have. There's just nothing that is going to work as well as that. You can go on for years and years and years. And and people do. (laughs) And and the reason that they do is because they're afraid to feel their base condition and they're afraid to feel their own wisdom. This was a point that was brought up in an article by Judith Leaf, somebody we went to see it uh, at the Shambhala Center in Brunswick. She wrote this article about what, you know, sort of what are we distracting ourselves from? Well, you probably would say, well, I'm distracting myself from pain or I'm distracting myself from loneliness or sorrow or something like that. But underneath that, you are actually also distracting yourself from wisdom. 
And the reason that you're distracting yourself from wisdom is because it is vast. And you are not acclimatized to vastness. You're more comfortable in smaller spaces. So whatever top-level emotion is happening, you're angry at somebody or you're whatever you are at someone else, you need to just stop going there, stop thinking about that, and go inside and check in with your energy and your mind and your body to discover what is actually going on. And then once you discover what is actually going on, you have taken responsibility for that. You are no longer externalizing it in any way. And then you can apply practice by entering into a state of devotion or open-heartedness or just doing some practice. When you go in there and you see and feel your real condition, you're going to want to do something about it because part of you wants to get all involved with more explanations and even practices that are, you're going to use your practices even to distract yourself, right? I'm going to like, you know, aggressively attack whatever it is that I'm seeing and I'm going to make it go away, right? That's just another effing distraction. Right? You're just fooling yourselves if you do that. You have to go immediately into your heart and get in touch with presence in whatever way you possibly can, whatever that, whatever works for you. You have tools. And you have to let that vastness and devotion and feeling of limitlessness take over. There's a million ruses that you can use to avoid taking responsibility by really grokking your real condition and then actually using your practice to actually do practice. You can use your practice to avoid practice. (laughs) And, you know, you don't want that to go on for years and years and years. What a waste. There's nothing so terrible in there. (laughs) And the great thing about that alive awareness, that vastness and presence that permeates everything and that you can discover in the heart space, the great thing about that is that it's not judging you. It doesn't care where you've been or what you've done. It doesn't care what a nasty piece of work you might be. You know? (laughs) It just doesn't care about any of that. It laughs at all that. (laughs) so understand that those of you that are very involved in worrying about yourselves or trying to control things through explanations or trying to aggressively bash your karmas over the head with your practice that you are just still distracting yourself you're pretending to have a spiritual practice and what you're actually doing is preserving your karmas under a different name. (laughs) Dun, dun, dun. So you can go slowly, but go slowly tasting that. Don't go slowly with all these explanations and excuses and aggressions and worrying. You know, this worrying about yourself that looks like you're working your practice, you're not. God is not worrying about you. And if God's not doing it, that means you are just being in that part. You're just playing that part of the worrier, worrying about yourself. And you're still being the played and not the player. That's for sure. Worrying about yourself is an occupation gives you something to do that feels meaningful. But it is not the practice of self-realization. 
Nor is just throwing up your hands and saying, oh, everything's fine, when you don't really know that. The effort that you need to make, and it's a tremendous effort, is to pull your way, self away from every single one of your ruses, every single one of your strategies, and dive into vastness and, pre and presence with everything that you've got. That takes a lot of effort. One of the names, of course, for this diving in practice is Mahamudra. I was thinking of the teacher that taught me Mahamudra, Lama Wangdor. I just wrote him a little letter. He's living up near Dharamshala, Sala, I'm not sure which it is, and uh, in some cave up there. <laughs> he's a meditation master. He, he's like in charge of a bunch of caves where people meditate. <laughs> I have no idea what that looks like. <laughs> this is just what I've been told. Like, I guess there's like people practicing in these caves and he wanders around giving them the occasional instruction. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it looks like. But anyway, he's pretty old. And uh, I wrote to him just to thank him for the great teachings that he gave me. And I got a letter back from his principal Western student, she said she was going to pass it on to him. So that, that made me really happy. And he said, and I'm sure this is something that's said throughout the Mahamudra lineages. He said, when the lion of Mahamudra roars, most of the people run in fear. But the ones who are really the children of the lion of Mahamudra come and drink the milk. That's the milk. Limitlessness. <laughs> the milk that never stops flowing. The milk that lets you know there's absolutely no nothing, nothing to worry about. Worrying is simply a strategic occupation. Giving you something to do so you don't have to feel vastness. <laughs> There's really nothing else to it. You might as well take up knitting. You know, it's the same kind of thing. Just sort of fills up time. But knitting's more productive, actually. <laughs> then you could all knit me beautiful sweaters instead of worrying all the time. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. <laughs> Jayakula is a nonprofit community offering opportunities to learn and practice in the direct realization traditions of Trika Shaivism and Dzogchen. We are based in Portland, Maine and Portland, Oregon. Visit jayakula.org to explore more of our offerings.